Okay, welcome to a new episode of Not Bothered Podcast. I'm here with Oris Zup. It's nice to see you again. Nice Four to years. See you. Yep, exactly. Four years. The time is flying very fast. Yeah. Very fast. But we were supposed to meet two weeks ago in Ukraine, but the times didn't overlap. Mm. I left, you, then you arrived. But we're here in Warsaw, in sunny Warsaw. Yeah, <laughs> I brought uh, Levy weather here and you brought British weather, you I know, did so th there we go. So, it reminds yeah. me of home. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about three things today. Uh -huh. We're going to talk about Nomad Mania. So if you guys who like travel, you need to pay attention. It's very, very good. It's free. Yep. A uh, very good tool to track your travels and to get ideas on what to do. I, I've used it for years and then I found out you're a partner. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about you, YouTuber. Entrepreneur, yep. tennis player <laughs> as well. Yeah. I'm here with my tennis racket, and tomorrow I am uh, playing tennis. So, okay. talk about this too. Yeah, and uh, the last one you're taking tourists around Ukraine all the way to Kharkiv. That's uh, dangerous and interesting. So, yeah. let's go straight into Nomad Mania. You can kind of explain what it is and why these guys would want to sign up and for free. So, we basically tell that Nomad Mania is the ultimate hub for global explorers. Uh, and then like you can expand on this topic. So, you know, uh, we have, it's like big platform mm -hmm. for people yeah. where people can track their travels. They can get inspiration from places where they go and like the, the, the ground for the Madmania is a map. So everything starts with the map. You, you put the places that you've been to, you explore the map of places you want to go. It's all well, nicely done uh, technologically. So it's very user friendly. Yeah. So for those people who are into maps, like really uh, think twice before joining Nomad Mania because it's so, so addictive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like from one side we have a technology which is about tracking, mapping, exploring, ticking uh, and so on. And on the second side we have uh, the community around it, yes, yeah, the community yeah, yeah. of travelers. And here I'm talking about like a serious traveler. So basically many members of Nomad Mania aim to visit every country in the world. Uh, we take this challenge of people very seriously. So, for example, most people who visit every country in the world are our users. Do you know how many people in the world are there who visit every country? <clears throat> I would say 150. So, uh, there are around 150 on our website. Okay, and you that can, was a you, guess, you, by the way. Yeah, you can <laughs> see them, you, their profiles are open yeah. and so on, there's a list. Uh, which countries they visit, I mean, all countries, like what was the last country, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah. or which year this person, how old he was, and so on, you know, mm. so very precise information. But in general, we think that there are approximately 250 people who visit every country in the world. Obviously, we cannot know anyone, but we have like a, like a KGB style uh, intelligence in our organization. And we really do track people who, mm -hmm. who, who visit every country. And just for you to like realize, and for you guys as well, that there are approximately a little bit over 600 people in the world who made it to the open space. And less than half of those who visited every country. Right. So, so you know, like it's it's a pretty uh, serious challenge. And that's uh, your challenge. You're gonna try and uh, do the same. Yeah, definitely yes. Like this, it's on my list too. And uh, you know, we are this group of crazy people who who, who go far beyond like the conventional routes. Yeah. Just for example, I just came back from a conference in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, where there were like 140 people and approximately 30 of those who visit every country in the world. Wow. Like my partner, uh, the founder of the Madmania, Harry Mercedes, is mm. like one of uh, the most traveled person basically. He's been to most places that you can imagine like physically on, on the ground, on earth. And he visited every country in the world twice. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. That is crazy. I've got oh, my yeah. coffee over here. So, yeah. So, Budmo, Budmo, yeah. Budmo. <laughs> Cheers. so, you know, and uh, like uh, here in, uh, I want to expand on the community topic, right? Yeah. Uh, when? Tomorrow we have Nomad Mania meetup in Warsaw. Okay. Actually, this is one of the reasons why I came here just to, to launch this, yeah? And we'll be setting up meetings all around the world. We have some tours together. Uh, our tours are not commercial at all. Mm. Basically, we just, uh, people just pay the amount which you have to spend on the, on the trip, but we do it very specially. So for example, two years ago, we were we were having a conference in Principe Island. Do you know oh, where yeah. that? Just off the coast of Africa. Yeah. 
so uh, which is the part of uh, Sao Tome and Principe country yeah uh, and in order to get there we had to hire a private plane with our group just to go there but because we're in the group it was not this exclusive Porsche trip yeah it was an adventure yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is the way you get to tough places basically so yeah mm -hmm. and so the people who are listening to this thinking I want to do that yeah. just get involved so they sign absolutely, up absolutely guys yeah. yeah just go on the website it's free uh, we always try to make it better and better. Mm -hmm. uh, I must warn you that probably you will get overwhelmed with the amount of features we have there. So just do it step by step easily. You know, we'll start with uh, looking at the map and just ticking the places you've been to. Yeah. Here I must also shout out that we go beyond just countries. Mm. Like there is a yeah. logic behind how we divide the world and we divide it into regions. Yeah. So. Uh, Poland has some regions, Ukraine has some regions, United States. So obviously it has all the states, yeah. but then also depending how interesting or how diverse the state is, we would divide it also into regions. Yeah. And in this way, we encourage people like to travel much further than just, you know, visiting the capital and, and that's it and telling I've been to this country. Mm -hmm. But also uh, we want, you know, to uh, broaden people understanding about the place. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that would be a good start. And then you just carry on. We have all types of lists. You do, yeah. Like re recently, we launched a slow list. I've seen that today. But, yeah, which basically you have to provide data how long did you stay in every country. And then there is like an algorithm which is calculating your slow score. OK. And uh, this is just the beginning. So <laughs> start from there, guys, and enjoy. Yeah, so uh, my score on the region, which seems to be like the, the, the main score, what, how yeah. many regions you visited, yeah. is 181 right now. 181, yeah. okay, 180. Okay, 18, that's, 18, 18. so basically, um, uh, I think we should expand here on the topic about the countries. So yeah, first yeah, of all, sure, sure. I'm just wondering, do you know how many countries are there? You know, how many countries are there in the world? It depends who you ask, but um, 193, 195, 197, one of them. Okay, so, take a choice, so yeah. let's, let's so one explain and why. Three. Yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, UN recognized as 193. Okay, so the, so the yeah. most basic list yeah, yeah. is 193. Yeah. And this stands for countries which are members of United Nations, yeah, yeah, yeah. which basically uh, undisputed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, there are a few uh, country type legal entities that mm. have a certain type of sovereignty yep. that could be claimed as a country. Yep. And you know, these are the um, supervisors in the UN, uh, mm. UN, which is like Palestine and, and Vatican. Exactly. Then there is Kosovo, for example. Kosovo, I mean, it, it was recognized by most of the countries yep. in the world, by over than half countries in the world is recognized, yep. but it's still not part of the United Nations. Then we also include into this list uh, Taiwan, okay. which basically has all, all uh, conditions to be a country, but it's not part of the UN because yeah. of this bit with mainland China. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and from there, like, so those are like four extra, you know, until uh, 97, yeah. 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 And then you can expand uh, for, for, for very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have a list which calls United Nations Plus, I see, yeah. which is like uh, 260 approximately. What would you include in there, like Gibraltar? Yeah, exactly. And like Gibraltar, Isle of Man, maybe. Isle of Man um, then uh, we've got there uh, Hong Kong. Okay, cool. Uh, some mind. some part like Western Sahara, for example. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some like these quasi unrecognized republics, okay. uh, like Abkhazia, yeah. for example. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Nagorno Karabakh Republic, you know. Okay, okay, okay. So disputed ones will go in there. Yeah, yeah. All, all, the all the disputed stuff yeah. uh, usually goes there. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a very interesting list of MQP, yeah. which is many quirky places, yeah. which is uh, 1301. And basically the main list, as you told, which is like over over the countries is uh, regions in each yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And this is also 1301 regions, yeah. The many quirky places is very interesting to me because you can see where they are. I went to one recently in uh, Portugal mm. on the corner of Portugal and Spain called Mirando do Duro. Yeah. Uh, it was a nice place right over the border from Spain. I didn't choose it because of Nomad Mania, but when I went to select it, I was like, oh, 
it's there. It's there. There's okay. an extra place. It's pretty yeah, interesting. So it's, it's, you know, it's very, that, that's like the way how, how you use the website and mm -hmm. explore it. You just look on the map and you see these like weird formations, yeah. diff, like some enclaves, for example, mm -hmm. or some rock in the middle of the isle of, of the sea. And uh, uh, we at Nomad Mania are really good in spotting those yeah. places. Yeah. And to take it further, let's, let's use Warsaw for an example. Mm -hmm. When you click on Warsaw, it shows you hundreds of things, what you can do, museums, yeah. bridges, lakes. Yeah, so those yeah. are called series in, in Nomad series, Mania. Right. We have series and obviously there are like different topics like castles, mm -hmm. bodies of water, uh, some weirdo stuff, mm -hmm. uh, some dark stuff, yeah. Uh, yeah. cemeteries, churches, you, you name it. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So like we were just speaking about Paraguay to Asuncion. Yeah. I had no idea what to do there. If I know, knew about Nomad Mania, I could have zoomed in. I'll go check out these six things that it tells me. At least I get to do something in that city. Uh, it's good for ideas. It's good for tracking where you've been. Yeah. And there's a thing we haven't talked about yet, which is achievements. So I'm number one yeah. on theme parks okay. for British people. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. But in my age range, so it's split into <laughs> age ranges. So, number one. So, like, you really can uh, go, yeah. like, you know, the rabbit hole <laughs> takes you very far. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, there is this effect of gamification, which exactly, creates a competition yeah. between the people, yeah. which is good yeah. uh, in some sense. And what what is even more important is being able to reach out to people, you know? So, basically, mm -hmm. you can go, let's say, you want to you wanna explore, you want to go to some challenging region, like somewhere in northern Chad, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or somewhere far, you know, which is like doesn't have any information online. Yep. You click there, and you you have a list of Nomad Mania users that visited this place. So you see, and you can just write to them and right. ask travel tips, you know. So cool. uh, uh, there are like really different angles how you can approach Nomad Mania. I have a, an interesting one for you. So you know, between Egypt and Sudan, there's Beer to Will. Yep. I interviewed the uh, the king of Beer to Will about three weeks ago. Uh, I'll give okay. you his details because he's setting up flights to there. He's the, he, really? It's a, it's a proper thing. He's gone full. He's got recognition in Singapore, uh, Nigeria. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, gone uh, big. In Nomad Mania, I think in the nearest time, we're going to like push the topic of micro nations. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, there is um, uh, Slow Jamastan. Do you know about this? <laughs> no, but that sounds, <laughs> sounds like it could be in Jamaica like, or something. Uh, 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 no, it's it's part, it's <laughs> somewhere in California. Right, right, right. Uh, or Arizona, like like there, mm. not far from San Diego. And um, the Sultan of Slow Jamastan, <laughs> basically he bought a piece of land and yeah. he's setting up borders and passports and- Right, uh, right, So cool. you can uh, reach out to him too. And, no, you know. why not? Yeah, that'd be uh, strange, but funny. <laughs> so the guy uh, we were talking about is doing it for humanitarian reasons. Uh, he's going to help Especially sta now, right? stateless yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, he's going to try to, um, it's all publicly what he's doing. Because there's been guys who've gone and put flags there and claimed that yeah. they're the king. But he's actually doing He's something. doing a real yeah, thing. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, it's very interesting, his story's interesting. Uh, I thought you'd like it. Um, definitely, I'll definitely take, take a look, guys. And if you didn't see that video, that's the one you, you should watch after our interview. Exactly, yeah. it'll be linked somewhere. Um, I think he, I think you'd like him. He's, he's a cool guy, I met him in Brussels. But he found me on YouTube about three years ago. Mm. Yeah. Um, about you then, let's move on to you. Yeah. So um, we, we met four years ago. Because I was in Lviv and I was like, I wonder who's here, who's a YouTuber? So I just messaged you and you're like, yeah, cool, I'll be there in an hour. So we met up, uh, had some food, had a beer, and then I left. But, um, so you, you found me through YouTube? I found you through Tanya, from my, so from my Tanya, partner. Through your yeah. partner, okay. Um, she knew who you were. Okay. I would say Ukrainian YouTube's not that big yet, but it's on its way. So people who watch Ukrainian language YouTube yeah. tend to know who you are. Okay. And funnily, funnily enough, linking Nomad Mania and you together, I was in Gdansk two weeks ago, told a, guy, a Ukrainian guy that was meeting you. And he went, oh yeah, 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 that's amazing. Everybody who I speak to about you likes you. And that's, oh, a, that's a good thing. Nice. Yeah, okay. There's never a bad word to say, so you're doing a good job like being- He's an asshole, like exactly. that, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're doing a good job as the ambassador for Lviv. Yeah. Um, it's a cool place which people should visit, I think. It's, it's one of my favorite places in Ukraine. I've been to a lot of the, the west side, mm. all around the Dnipro River left side. 
Um, Ukraine's one of my favorite countries. I mean, I met my partner there, so. It's, it's an amazing place, guys. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Exactly. I love you, Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, okay. We can speak English so people can understand. Yeah. Um, you have to tell us about your YouTube videos, what kind of stuff you do. You have many channels. Yeah, so uh, I am I am a blogger for a long time, you know, like I, I started my blogging career all the way back in 2011, probably from a written standalone website. Right, so right. basically I was just writing articles, mm -hmm. long, long format. And then when the technology was picking up, I, I was just, you know, adopting it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, I started blogging before Instagram. And YouTube back then for many people was like a video sto uh, ho ho hosting platform, yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, and then uh, yeah, I did this website uh, openmind.com.ua oh, uh, okay. in Ukrainian language. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, you know, like you you, you have like the Facebook, the mm -hmm. Instagram, uh, and then YouTube as well. Yeah. So it was like coming everything very organically. Uh, I also like I'm kind of proud that. Uh, I was one of the first who actually started blogging in Ukrainian exactly. language in Ukraine. So people who see like about the war now and so on, yeah. like they start realizing the Ukraine, Russia, that there was a conflict for a long time and yeah. so on. Yeah. But when I was starting uh, my online career, uh, just just think about this: only seven percent of all the web pages of Ukrainian internet were in Ukrainian language. Mm -hmm. The rest was like mostly in Russian. Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, uh, everybody was telling I'm crazy, that it's not never will work out. And very people who were like so patriotic and so on, if they were thinking about the numbers and about just, you know, succeeding online, yeah. they like just Russian and that's it. Yeah. For me, it was always out of question because I'm Ukrainian native speaker. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I, I now was looking east, I was always looking west. Yeah. I would say that my English is probably better than my Russian language oh, cool. as well. Yeah. So so this one, so English would be the option. But I yeah. kind of felt I want to do this in Ukrainian locally. Yeah. And you know, and from there it went. And if you, if you are sticking around for quite some time, diligently somewhere, then you know, then then you continue and you you, you make things happen. Yeah. So your yeah. name gets remembered. Yes, yes, yes. Especially if you do good things. It gets remembered yeah, if, if you, you do, do bad things, things as well, yeah. but not for the best reasons. Yeah. Um, I try to do good things. You do, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're definitely at the forefront, I think, of Ukrainian language YouTube. When yeah. I speak about Ukrainian YouTube, I mean in Ukrainian language. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, because it's worth noting that yeah. uh, most Ukrainians who were on YouTube were doing it in Russian. For bigger views. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. thinking about the, the the outreach of the audience, you yeah. know. But in uh, in online business, I think the 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 total numbers don't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, more important is like how densely you will build the relationship uh, with your audience. And for this reason, I highly recommend everyone to read a beautiful, short, but very efficient article, which is called uh, "One Thousand True Fans." Okay. Take a look at this. One Thousand True Fans. Uh, this is like a, a basic explanation how how to deal with an online stuff. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's cool. I like that you you and other Ukrainian YouTubers and bloggers are pushing your language and not letting people not being enticed by the big views. Yeah, that's me. And it's on the rise now. You know, it, like, it is, unfortunately, yeah. I really feel sorry. Uh, I mean, most of Irish people don't speak Irish anymore, right? Oh, no. yeah. uh, most Belarusians don't speak Belarus language anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, miraculously, we Ukrainians managed to preserve identity yeah. even after centuries of being suppressed. Yeah. And this is what we are very proud for. And I think like now the entire world basically reconsider and uh, uh, have like a new fresh look on Ukraine yeah. and Ukrainians. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. We didn't know much about it back when we were kids. Ukraine yeah. wasn't really mentioned. You were just overshadowed by Russia. Um, but now, at least with sports, you're flying in most sports, boxing, um, tennis, the women's tennis as well, yes, I believe. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. So, you. I mean, I, I love Ukraine. I think it's bots. I think it's really? one of my favorite countries. I was very annoyed for, for two reasons. One, I wanted to be there. And two, because of what's happening. So, 
Yeah, so much appreciated. So, so this one, you know, and uh, my uh, dream was always to travel to see the world. Uh, I am uh, a graduated lawyer, okay. basically, but uh, I started working in a legal career just after university, but then I just realized it's not going to take me where I really want to go in my life. So I had to change my career. And uh, in the basic ground, like online entrepreneurship, marketing, this stuff yeah. is uh, something I, I'm very happy that I set on this path. And you enjoy it? Oh, absolutely. Mm. And, uh, you know, once you start uh, working online and making a buck there, yeah. then, you know, you can travel the world, see, see the things. Yeah. And uh, so far I visited over 130 countries, which is, yeah, 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 yeah. And it costs money. Uh, people often message me when I post, like, after another year of traveling, how do you afford it? I'm a web developer. Yeah. I, I, I work on a computer. It doesn't matter where I am. Exactly. There's nothing, there's no trick to it. I just earn enough money to do it. And you do the same with marketing. And if you want a business that can be online, that's how you can do it. There's many ways, but mine's pretty boring. I make websites and, and fix things. No, it's like yeah. magic. You, you, you create <laughs> something, right? You, you create stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, create so. what you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, somebody created Nomad Mania. Mm -hmm. And I can see how, how complex that is behind the scenes. Yeah. Especially when you add a new thing in, you need to figure out an algorithm of how people interact with it. Our um, uh, IT director is, is actually based in Warsaw. All right, cool. So we're going to have some precise work with him tomorrow, shoulder by shoulder, yeah. Yeah, that's very, very, very good. Um, it is definitely a useful tool, and I do a, I, I, it's not sponsored, no sponsor here. That's why there's no thing in the top corner. I just like it, so I thought you guys who like travel. It will like enrich your it. life. I think so, and travels. Yeah. Uh, one question about your 130 countries. Yes. I assume you've already been to Russia in the past. Yes. And Belarus. Yeah. So you don't need to go to them again? Don't. I, I mean, uh, I was in Belarus twice, and I was in Russia four times, okay. but only Moscow and around. Okay. And it was usually like a stopover on the way flying somewhere in Asia, because mm. uh, let's say before 2014, before Russia um, annexed Crimea and started war in Donbas, uh, most of the flights mm -hmm. to, to in the eastern direction were the touring from Moscow in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, that makes yeah. sense. That's, that's why I kind of visited. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to see more of Russia, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, from the geographical standpoint, a very interesting place to go, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure once uh, this war is finished, Ukraine will win and Russia will collapse. It will be even more interesting to travel because uh, there will be so many new countries yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> then, then you'll have to add them yeah. up in the mud. <laughs> Speaking from their mentality of that used to be ours, I had a message yesterday from a Mongolian saying, Lake Baikal is ours. Well, I'm going to get it back then. Yeah, yeah, if, they, yeah. if Russia can do it, we can take it yeah, from like them. Yeah, like Russia, <laughs> if you think deep, is like is the only remaining true land empire. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of those, you know, like th this is the story of the 21st century. We will see the, uh, fed not the, fed like it will be the decomposition of the Russian Federation mm -hmm. in its present form, uh, because, um, you know, like up up to 35 percent of current population of Russian Federation are not ethnic Russians, yeah. which basically tells that. Uh, those nations, they will probably with time then come up and reconsider the national identity. And this is also a global uh, historical process, okay. which on the European continent is actually shifting west, uh, shifting east. Mm -hmm. You know, France was established as a national state after the French Revolution, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Then you remember during the most of the 19th century, uh, Germany and Italy was just distributed into small city-states and then they formed their nation in, in the middle of the 19th mm -hmm. century. Then you have the entire story of uh, Central and Eastern Europe, like all the Slavs that yeah. they, you know, yeah. after World War II made their own city, like, like Poland, for example, you know, po Poland was uh, uh, cut between uh, three empires all the way, uh, like between uh, 1774 three or four and all the way until the World War One. 
it was like you know west was german the east was yep. uh, under russia and south was under po under austria yep. so they like kind of regained their independence in um, 1918 uh, mm. and then you you've got uh, you know the soviet union collapse like in, in a bunch of new countries in uh, in east uh, europe and then it, now it's time for the next move <laughs> what else can I say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to shout out Poland. I think it's a great country. Absolutely. Yeah. I love this country. People yeah. here are class. Especially when you go down there. There's a lot of support for Ukraine when you walk to yeah, the yeah. Oh, Stary Miasto. I, I, I am from Western Ukraine. I'm from Lviv. Yeah. I feel completely at home in Poland. Yeah, yeah. I speak Polish fluent. Cool. You, you yeah. heard me talking. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Uh, let's keep on travel. Yeah. So, you have a plan or you're already doing? Taking people all the way over to Kharkiv. Uh, on a yeah, tour. So, so, so basically uh, you're told like you're organizing tours. I'm not really organizing tours. Yeah. Uh, this is rather an, uh, uh, an educational visit to Ukraine okay. that, that, that will like solve a few jobs, a few aims at the same time. Okay. Yeah? So first of all, we are organizing our Nomad Mania Awards in Ukraine which means that we have something like an Oscar in the travel world, okay. you know, where we nominate people for uh, the most intrepid uh, traveler, the most, uh, let's say, a traveler who's traveling with aim, uh, like the biggest traveler out of all numbers, mm -hmm. uh, some female travelers, you know, yeah, and then yeah. the best digital nomad, uh, the best travel book. So it's like an Oscar That's in the cool. travel world. Cool. And uh, so far it's been hosted only online. But since when I stepped in as a partner, yeah. I just pushed to have the decision and to make it live. Yeah. And since we are like such an like not conventional travel community, we would go to we would like to go to special places. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And considering that Nomad Mania is very supportive towards Ukraine and our members are very supportive. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, we just like let's make it in Ukraine. Let's okay. make it in Ukraine despite the war. Uh, we'll, we, we will arrange like the most, the highest security measures. Mm -hmm. First of all, it will be held in Lviv, like the actual event, okay, okay. the official event yeah. in Lviv. I already booked the venue. It will be in an underground bunker, <laughs> which makes it even more special. When will it be? Uh, October 20th. The actual event will be held in Lviv. Okay. But also, we understand that, you know, some people want to see something more. That's why we are offering some add-ons. One of them is going all the way east to Kharkiv, which is next to the Russian border. Yep. And the entire like the city is pretty badly, badly damaged. I was yep. there twice. Mm -hmm. You can add some of my videos I maybe so, yeah, la can, layer up yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there will be like Kharkiv, then there will be Kiev, and then there will be Lviv. Yeah. So the idea is that the entire week prior to the awards will be visiting Ukraine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The smallest group will go all the way to Kharkiv and will visit the occupied areas. So we will visit areas which were like under Russian occupation. Okay, okay. Then we will do Kharkiv. Then this group will move to Kyiv and some other people will come from Lviv. So this will, group will grow in Kyiv. And we will want to, to show like the heart of Ukraine, the yeah. capital, yeah. and also the areas around. So like, we are talking about like Irpin, Bucha, you know, like oh, this right, this right, uh, right. renowned, uh, tragically renowned uh, places. And we want actually to show people, let's say, why the defense of Kiev succeed, why it was not taken, you know, yeah. because. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do like geography as well. So we'll mm -hmm. go to the river, we'll show like there is a river and that this bridge was destroyed to prevent the advance to the Russian army. Like so very deep stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we will try to meet like different voluntary groups. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, like I want to make it educational. I, I want to make it with a good positive impact. Mm -hmm. The fact that uh, foreigners will be coming from all around the world to Ukraine, and I'm talking about the high profile foreigners, yeah. is uh, showing like another uh, gesture of support, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And now uh, also, um, even on the governmental level in Ukraine, and I know like all the people who po do policy making and tourism and so on, uh, they are reconsidering how are we going to promote tourism. Okay. You know, you, you've been to Bosnia. I've been to Bosnia, yeah. In Sarajevo, everything is about the Sarajevo siege. It is indeed, yeah, everything. So we don't want this to be everything about the war. Yeah. We want to make it a balance between showing a beauty of Ukraine, mm -hmm. but also providing an insight into the tragic events. Yeah. yeah but yeah. we don't want people just come take picture destroyed buildings and leave you know like so so it's not about dark tourism it's about education yeah 
about support and about like understanding stuff. Yeah. And then once it will be done, we meet in Lviv, and the, like most people will probably come only to Lviv for mm. obvious reasons across the border from Poland, yeah. and we'll have the official event, which will be like a summary of everything happened before and after. Yeah, that's cool. That's like our idea. Price-wise, we try to keep it as low as possible just to cover the basic costs, because the main reason here is to open Ukraine, like, to open the gate, just to build extra bridge between Ukraine and the world. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I was there recently. I was and we can Lviv. link to that uh, of description, obviously. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there recently. We crossed over from Shemsil to Lviv. Then we drove to Chikasi Oblast. Then we drove to Kiev. Then to Makariv. That was heavily attacked. Then we went to Zhitoma. Uh, every single night there's an air raid siren in, yeah, that, yeah. in that city. Uh, and it's loud. And then we come back to Lviv. We left. And then what happened in the city happened like two days later. I was there. You, I, 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 I just I just arrived basically. So we we didn't overlap, but yeah. this attack on Lviv happened like two or three days after I arrived. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because uh, that was the safest bit. <laughs> we'll wait. He's gone to find something down there. So yeah, we arrived. We we left. That happened. I seen you arrived and. But see, but we met here. That's like yeah. that's the beauty of uh, having the geographical freedom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And being flexible, obviously. Uh, yeah. So you've done 130 countries. I'll, yeah. I'll ask you a few more quick ones. What's your favorite country? <laughs> well, I know I can't answer that myself. So. Uh, uh, like, you know, asking a person about the favorite country is like asking, let's say, a painter about his favorite painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, what's your favorite movie? You know. So usually. I like here, like when you watch a movie, it really goes through you, mm. you like it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, it fades away, exactly. you see another movie, mm. that, that's a beautiful movie. So I, I, I'm like, I like to live in the moment and I always like appreciate any destination I go. Mm. And in that very moment when I do travel, I feel like very happy and I really mm. like this place. So yeah, you like, like new stuff too? You like seeing new things? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I'll change it a bit then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some, a country that some people would never think to go that you were like, it was cool. I mean, Ukraine definitely. Yeah, yeah Ukraine is one yeah. of those. Uh, I'm not sure about people not thinking to go, but I, w I could like really, let's say, outline a few countries out there. So I, I highly uh, encourage people to explore Turkey. Like Turkey okay. is the entire sub small subcontinent. Mm -hmm. There are like Black Sea in the north, Mediterranean in the south, Aegean in the west. Yeah, mm. uh, different climates. Uh, then uh, you have the cosmopolitan areas of Istanbul and some like really like, like thousands years old villages mm. somewhere in Cappadocia. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you have uh, some desert-like arid places and uh, pine forests. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you name it, Turkey is where one of the most interesting and diverse countries out there. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to reach. It's basically uh, in the middle of the world. Yeah. You know, like so. If you go to Istanbul airport. Is like the melting pot. It's the most diverse population, like passenger traffic you oh, could yeah. get there it's, because it's crazy. Africa, Asia, and Europe basically connects there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Turkey definitely yes. Uh, I mean, Poland is so dynamic now. Mm. Yeah, like I really like it's a sleeping giant of, like of Europe. Uh, if to me, Poland is like an improved Ukraine. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that, that's how I approach it. And uh, all four of my grandparents were born in Poland, okay. basically, okay, okay. yeah. So, uh, which doesn't make me, po I'm still Ukrainian, but they were born here because population was mixed before World War II. Okay, okay. Uh, so this one. Uh, what about an African country? African? Uh, so, um, I mean, if uh, South African yeah. country, yeah. Uh, South, South Africa South is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it really like stands apart a little bit of the rest of Africa because it, it, it's just much more developed than okay. other African okay. countries. Uh, it's impossible to tell. It's like a Western country, I oh, would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I would say there, uh, climate. I like climate there, uh, so it's not like humid, not hot. It's like a fresh, nice climate okay. because like further away from the equator. And the altitude is pretty high in most of the South Africa. So Johannes, like our um, our content manager in Nomadmania, uh, is a girl Ruth from South Africa. Okay. And just yesterday I had a call with her. She, she's sitting with a hat. 
Interesting. Because it's like almost negative temperature now in, right. in Johannesburg. Can you really? believe it? Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's wouldn't winter. think of it. Yeah. First of all, it's winter now yeah. there. Super. And secondly, uh, you know, it's it's inland. It's up like like almost like a thousand meters above right. the sea level. It's get cold, like really. Like it was snowing one morning there. Crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, I just got back from uh, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon. Mm. Uh, I would say Cameroon is pretty interesting. Okay. It's, uh, it's like... Um, Africa in a nutshell. You've got sea, you have jungles, waterfalls, you have the Mount Cameron, which is a huge volcano. Right. Uh, there are over 70 different uh, tribes that all speak French between each other. So it's well, their own language together. <laughs> uh, many languages are not interchangeable, you know, for yeah. them. No, no, no. So the, like, the lingua franca is French in right. Cameroon. It's like and in India where they speak English exactly, between each other. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. On then, a train uh, you can hear them speak in their own language. Yeah. But across the, the, mm -hmm. the, they speak English to each other. Yeah, so this one, uh, you know, north of Cameroon is like desert stuff. Okay. South is jungle. No, yeah, this, this is very interesting. Yeah. It's already, like, it has already enough infrastructure so that you can actually travel. That's cool. Because some places in Africa are really challenging just to move around. But that one, yeah, I would I got start told from there. Cameroon yeah. is Africa. Like, if you're going to go to Africa to travel, that's your beginner point because it's easy to get around and it's safer, Cameroon, than uh, maybe yeah. going to Chad or... And recently, <laughs> it's like, okay, now we do the promotion of travel tourism in, mm -hmm. in Cameroon. Recently, they introduced e-visas. Really? So basically, you can apply online and just get it in the airport upon arrival, which is, which is usually a challenge in African countries. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is um, something we've looked at because me and Tanya have different passports. Yeah. Um, being British, I get access to most countries. But then in Africa, yeah, I, that it seems to be the much. opposite no. yeah. as well. So, yeah. like, I don't need one for South Africa, but she does. And um, it just, we have to think ahead. We can't just go to Africa and, and fly there, there, there. We have to think ahead. And, but if they start improving that, uh, tourism will increase in yeah, these countries. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else you want to say? Do you want to promote? Want to promote well, your Instagram? We all, oh yeah, basically, guys. Um, uh, we were been talking that I did like all my blogging stuff in Ukrainian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, when uh, uh, the full-scale invasion started in Ukraine, um, I just thought like, what will be my participation? You know, uh, because yeah. I'm definitely like, I want. Uh, uh, I came back from Karabakh to Ukraine to participate okay, okay. in the resistance. You know, like many people flee, I came back. Okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, like, you know, after reconsidering many different things, I thought that using my skills, my existing team, uh, my wish and my abilities and my network, uh, if I will, you know, just build bridges between Ukraine and the rest of the world, like this is something where I can right. make the biggest impact. So I started war reporting uh, from the early days of the war. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I started a new English language channel. Guys, welcome to, to do this. I switched my Instagram to English. Yep. Uh, so basically, and I had my private Facebook was also English. So basically now I have two big Ukrainian mediums, mm -hmm. which is Ukrainian YouTube yep. and Ukrainian public page. Okay, cool. Both of them are like around 50,000 uh, subscribers, mm -hmm. yeah? And then I've got Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and private Facebook in English. So okay. you can add all of those, and please guys, subscribe to whatever makes sense to you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. choose the one. All right, well, thanks for coming on. If you think of coming to Ukraine, please reach reach out and uh, I'll do my best to give you at least some kind of tip or even we'll meet up if I'll be around. Throw a message over yep. on Instagram and meet up. Okay, done. Let's go. Thank you.